Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wilde, who has been nicknamed the blood detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Wilde also has several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Wilde, we have some questions that people have sent us through email today and they would like some answers to. Okay, great. Okay, so Alison is 32 mm -hmm. and asking about her difficulties losing weight. Right. When she does lose the weight, she eventually gains it back. Uh -huh. And she's done a few of the popular diets and would like to know, how can I lose the weight and keep it off? Yeah, this is such a key issue with a lot of people. You know, uh, people will begin uh, food plans and diet programs and wonder why the weight's not coming off. And a lot of the time, it's not their fault. It's just something inherently wrong with the approach that they're taking. Since we don't know exactly uh, what Allison uh, did, mm -hmm. I'll just outline some of the basic things that we all need to really think about in terms of weight loss. So number one is, of course, calories in and calories out. Everyone knows that. So uh, obviously, if you eat more calories, you're going to gain more weight. So looking first at the calories you're consuming and then where those calories are coming from. Are they from protein, carbohydrates, and fats? And there are healthy uh, or healthier types of proteins. You want to think about animal type proteins more than uh, meat based and poultry based uh, proteins. But those aren't uh, particularly the wrong way to go. It's just that that's what I prefer. If, we, if we're going to uh, you know, use weight loss as a, a health endeavor, you want to think lower down the food chain so the plant based nuts, beans, seed proteins. They'll just further weight loss uh, better and lower cardiovascular risk. And then uh, healthy fats. So uh, the polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, uh, which include uh, olive oil and then the oils that we'll find in uh, avocados mm -hmm. and, uh, and walnuts and, and raw seeds. They, they need to be raw though, Cassie, because if you roast the seeds and the nuts, then you saturate the fats. And saturated fats put weight on a person. So, uh, and then the other carbohydrates, and most of us who are watching this are, are health-minded enough to know that there are a difference in, in, in carbohydrates. So we want to get the unrefined, non-processed carbohydrates, which we'd find in, in grains, uh, nuts, and, and seeds again. And uh, start with those basics. And then we want to eat several small meals throughout the course of the day, what I, what I call grazing, rather than eating three big meals or just two meals or skipping breakfast. These are not uh, health-promoting activities and not weight-promoting activities. If a person skips breakfast, for example, in the morning, the body actually learns to hold on to fat. So we want to actually feed our body calories multiple times throughout the course of the day. That kind of revs up our metabolic rate and keeps our thyroid function at, at a high level, and that's that's for fat burning. So we actually want four or five different smaller meals, you know, per day, and we want to stop eating when you know just when we're a little bit hungry. We don't want to go to the full satisfaction stage. And uh, again, uh, that way we cause our stomachs to shrink by eating smaller meals throughout the course of the day, and that sends the right messages from the stomach to the feeding center in the brain, which is the hypothalamus, and that teaches your nervous system how to eat less and burn calories more efficiently. And then, of course, uh, there's exercise, choosing the right exercise for a person. If you absolutely hate the exercise that you're doing, that's probably not the best choice. And that exercise needs to be performed at a level where the person, you know, is sweating. So, you know, Allison, you're 32 years old. Uh, assuming you don't have any health problems that inhibit you from exercising, uh, once you you get approval, with, you know, from your doctor in terms of uh, how strenuous you can exercise, you want to get yourself a heart rate monitor. And uh, you know, there are available, uh, you know, websites, for example, where you can search your age and your height relative to also where your uh, your heart rate should be. And you want to be in the probably in the 60 to 75 percent of what's known as a heart rate max, which again gets the the heart rate to a point where you're really burning calories and you want to be consistent with your exercise. If you skip exercise routines, you're, you're teaching your body how to burn fat and then you're not. And then it's learning and then it's not. So you want to be very, very consistent. In terms of nutritional supplements, I, I know that Allison specifically didn't ask about this, but there are all kinds of herbs and vitamins and minerals that could be used to enhance uh, uh, fat burning, and those are all listed on our on our website at uh, uh, www.intmedny.com. So we've got all these herbs and, and different uh, dietary measures that are a little bit more specific that go a little bit beyond what we just spoke about right now. And, and the last thing I'll mention, Cassie, is that if Allison or anyone else is having a weight issues, they should have their laboratory work looked at because uh, it may be a thyroid issue because we have a slow metabolism. It's not as common as, as people think, but it, it is a possibility. And then there are many, many other health problems that affect how the body burns fat. We mentioned you know, hormonal imbalances. Uh, uh, if we don't have enough testosterone, for example, we're certainly going to have a difficult time putting on lean muscle tissue, and that's why we need to burn fat. So those are just a, f a few of the highlights. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, great.